Okay, folks, I think we'll get going. So welcome back to our next session. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Martin Fullard. I'm the editorial director at MASH Media and editor of Conference News and temporarily, hopefully, anyway, Exhibition News. Now, our next webinar is called Managing Emerging Mental Health Problems Post Lockdown and is hosted by the fantastic Helen Moon, CEO and founder of the Mental Health and Wellbeing Voice of the Events Industry, event well it's a charitable and community social enterprise that has been set up to support educate and campaign for better mental health and well-being in the events industry and there's never been a more appropriate time i think to really have this conversation now if anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask helen please do pop them in the q a box which you will see at the bottom of your screen but before i hand over to helen we have a quick message from one of our partners inspire me travel Hi, my name is Karen Slater and I'm the CEO of Inspire Me Travel. Inspire Me Travel is an experiential travel company offering inspiring experiences under specific categories such as jazz, opera, wine, gastronomy, art, culture, etc. to various worldwide destinations. The companies that we worked with pre-COVID and that we hope to continue to work with when life returns to some kind of normality, used our experiences for team building, sales incentives, and for corporate hospitality. One of our favorite team building exercises which takes place in Monte Carlo is the James Bond style experience where you'd have six people in a speedboat, six people in a helicopter, and you would actually race against each other and then the teams change over. We have some great sales incentives, such as touring Rome on the back of a Vespa, and your guide is your, your Vespa driver. Wine tasting in Chianti in Tuscany at the former home of Mona Lisa, where after your wine tasting session, you have lunch on the terrace where Leonardo da Vinci actually painted Mona Lisa. We have some fantastic 1940s jazz experiences in Paris, and the list goes on. So. Hopefully, when life does return to normal, we can offer you these experiences and more as we constantly strive to find unique and new experiences to offer our clients. Thank you for listening and hopefully we'll talk again. Bye-bye. Okay, good morning everybody. Um, great little short video there. And some very inspiring travel trips from a wellbeing perspective. I'd love to go on some of those, wouldn't you? Um, when we do get back to whatever new life will look like, I think, um, rather than going back to the normal, I, I don't think unfortunately we're gonna be in a position to be going back to any kind of old normal, what it was like. So it'd be lovely to do some of those things in the kind of when we can get back to some kind of new life and new way of doing things. So um, my name's Helen Moon. I'm the CEO and founder of Eventwell. Um, Eventwell has been around since 2017 and we closely followed a statement that came out at the back end of 2016 by CareerCast that stated that event coordination was the fifth most stressful career. Um, there were a few of us in the industry at the time that um, myself and, and other colleagues, most of us who were managing complex mental health conditions and disorders um, and having a very successful career in events, I might add as well. So um, I'd, I'd kind of always wanted for a while really to try and bring something to the industry that would try and change opinions, thought processes, mindsets um, around mental health and well-being in our industry. And also as well, when that statement came out that it's a fifth most stressful career, for a lot of people it wasn't a surprise. The most surprising thing was that it, it kind of sat below people like firefighters and army um, veteran and, and army personnel, sorry, and all those kind of positions. We kind of think, although to some people it might be life or death, but generally events aren't really life or death. Um, but from the, the stress that we've all been through, we've all experienced and we've all felt in our industry, you know, that, that statement wasn't much of a surprise. But the biggest thing that came from that and the event well movement that started in 2017 with the first event wellbeing week, which happened in September of that year, is that we're now 
for the first time in a long time um, and over the past kind of three years starting to talk more openly about mental health and well-being in our industry okay so event well as as marty introduced us we're a social enterprise we're a, a trailblazer in terms of mental health and well-being in our industry we lead the industry's um annual campaigns um i've already mentioned event well-being week which happens in september um we are actually at the moment in event well-being month with everything that has happened this year um, and I'll come on to the reasons why in a second with everything that's happened to us this year as individuals, as professionals, as businesses and as a joined up industry, because this is happening to all of us. We're all being affected and it doesn't matter what you do in our industry. We're all being impacted very, very hard at the moment. Um, we decided that that we wanted to turn the whole of September into um, a month worth of educational events, podcasts, blog posts, activities that people could get on board on. So just to take things back to basics in terms of what good mental health and wellbeing care looks like. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, mostly. Eventwell's vision from the very beginning has, has been um, to make tangible change to the event industry's relationship with wellbeing. That's the, the big thing that we want to impact. Our mission, Marty introduced us, our mission is to be the mental health and wellbeing voice of the industry. And basically what we do as a social enterprise is we, we are mainly a membership and event organisation. And the money that we make via our events and our membership gets reinvested into the in industry through our outreach um, activities, which are campaign month, week, day. Um, the event well manifesto that we push out to the industry, which I'll talk about, I'll talk about and cover at the end, and also our outreach in terms of support. So the event well info line, which is a free info line for event professionals to contact should they be struggling, but also as well, the event well pledge is part of our outreach support. Um, and event well pledge is our peer to peer support program, and that's event professionals pledging either financial pledges, whether that be a grocery shop or help with utility bills or present for a child, down to um, business mentoring, um, business mentoring, CV reviews, redundancy, lived experience sharing, all of those kind of things. So I'll chat about those a little bit more at the end. But we do actually have three values at Eventwell, which we've had since the beginning. And our three values are um, for individuals, self-care, for businesses, it's culture, and for industry, it's empathy. And we've, we've always kind of pushed the importance of these three values of an industry and to ensure that we're impactful to promote better mental well-being for everybody who works in our industry we all have mental health these conversations are not reserved for people who are already struggling um, in order for our industry to thrive as an industry and to be sustainable and more resilient self-care culture and empathy are incredibly important and ever so more now in the current climate that we find ourselves in and the difficulties that we're finding ourselves in. So I, what I wanted to do today was I just wanted to go through each of those three different areas. So from an individual perspective, from a business perspective, but also from an industry perspective. And then we'll take some questions at the end. So in terms of individuals, um, it's a challenging period, a very challenging period. Um, I talk from experience in terms of managing mental health I have bipolar disorder um, I've had bipolar disorder since I was 16 unfortunately though I went through 20 years of misdiagnosis um, I haven't had the best of mental health care over my lifetime and I, I have had a mental health condition for pretty much 80 percent of my lifetime I'm 47 now um, my bipolar was diagnosed in 2009 I'm um, experiencing a massive and I, I use the word catastrophic to ex, to explain it because that's what it felt like at the time and that's what it felt like to the people around me as well because of the mental health conditions isn't just the person who's experiencing it it can have a massive effect on the people who are close to someone who's suffering as well um and it was around it but it was around about 2009 when i got my diagnosis of bipolar i got the correct diagnosis and from that i was able then to plan my self-care make lifestyle changes and lifestyle choices that meant that it was much easier for me to manage and that is the secret to self-care um is finding the stuff that works for you we're all very different 
will all be impacted in different ways by different illnesses and, and setbacks and adversity. My bipolar, for example, will look very different to somebody else's bipolar. I'm probably what's classified as a, a highly functioning um, individual with a mental health condition. Um, because if, if most people that have met me, you would, you would have no idea unless I told you um, that uh, I, I was managing a mental health condition. Um, but there are lots of people where that it looks, bipolar looks very, very different for them. Okay, so that's the important thing to, to realise that self-care is very individual. Conditions such as depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever people might be suffering from are just, you know, and, and not to downplay anxiety at all because anxiety is, can also be a crippling condition for some people. Um, it's, you have to find what works for you and your experience will be very different to other people's. So self-care is, is very much built as well around self-awareness. So it's learning to... to listen to your body learning to take notice when it sends you those those little cues and signals that something's wrong or it needs you to rest or it needs you to take a break so self-awareness is crucial to self-care so you have to learn to adapt to that um recognizing when you're hungry recognizing when you're thirsty recognizing when you've got, you've got a headache that maybe that you first do recognizing when you feel tired and at different times when you feel tired at different times in a day that you might need to be getting better sleep so it's just learning self-awareness is all about being aware of yourself the impact you are having on yourself as well as those around you um but the most important thing that people can be doing now in terms of managing any kind of emerging mental health problems or, or conditions out of this lockdown and period that we're in is is building a good foundation um, around mental health and well-being and this also includes your emotional health and your physical health there's going to be a report coming out um, after, at the end of Event Wellbeing Month in October, where we've been doing research all the way through September this year. So we, we have an indication in terms of percentage-wise, um, how many pe people in the industry have lost their jobs, how many people have been made redundant, but we also know how they've been affected um, most and in what ways they've been affected most. So do have a look out for that report and um, we'll know if they're being impacted in terms of their sleep, their diet, what is it they're struggling with. Um, but the important thing, as I said, is, you know, the three pillars of health. You may have heard people talking about the three pillars of health. You may have poo-pooed it. The three pillars of health basically are fundamental. They provide a foundation in terms of good mental health and well-being. And, you know, I don't want to preach to the converted because we're all grown ups, I think, on this webinar. I mean, we're all grown ups on this webinar. We all know the things that we should be doing to take care of our health. OK, um, we all know that we should be eating healthily. We all know that you should get a good night's sleep. We all know that you need to exercise to keep yourself fit and healthy as well. So none of this stuff is rocket science. And this is the beauty about mental health and well-being. Um, so long as you take the time to take some simple steps and make some small incremental changes, don't try and make a, a change where you say to yourself, from now on, I'm going to eat more healthily because you'll never achieve it. You've got to break things down into small chunks. So if you want to look at your diet and you want to make some changes to your diet, and this is also bearing in mind that 80% of event professionals pre-lockdown were struggling with their diet already, either eating too much or too little. And there's lots of biological reasons in the body as to why event professionals, particularly when they're under stress, struggle with their diet. Um, well, that's another talk. Um, I want to keep it nice and plain and simple for today. Um, if you want to make changes to your diet, if you want to eat more healthily, then take one week where you think, today I'm going to eat an extra piece of fruit. And you just do that for a week. Then next week, if you're someone who, if you go out for something to eat or you have a meal, you have a side order of chips or fries, have a side order of a salad instead. And um, just make those small changes that can make impact. And that's the easiest way for nutrition. Remember, keep it balanced. For busy event professionals, we have a fabulous nutritionist that we work with, Emily Farrell at Vital Health Nutrition. Um, her advice has always been protein at every meal, protein, protein, protein at every meal, um, but mixed obviously with carbohydrates, healthy carbs, complex carbs, and, and also good fats as well. Try and avoid low fat foods where possible. And there's lots of 
advice and health reasons now as to why cutting out good fight good fats from your diet um and what to have traditionally been seen to be bad fats are, are actually quite good for us um, and there's reasons your brain actually um, needs good fats in its diet and tends to operate well so um, make sure you eat your foods diet eat the rainbow you know eat as much fruit and vegetables in the day as you can and um, try and every time you have something to eat try and have some some fruit or vegetables with it just aim for that just so protein and fruit and vegetables at every meal and um, go for that way um, sleep good sleep hygiene um, so try and have a go to bed time and a wake up time you have a circadian rhythm which is your inner body clock um, so try and tune into that you'll tend to you'll start to find that you start getting yourself in that nice sleep hygiene routine of going to bed at the same time waking up at the same time then you'll naturally wake up without the need for alarm clocks um set yourself a bedtime routine switch your devices off at nine o'clock if you can um read a book or do something else instead um you know i just sounded like for those who were born in the 80s it just sounded like why don't you for a second there um so, you know, make your, your bedroom a haven to sleep, really, really go out on your sheets and your, your bed, blackout blinds, nice cool temperature, room temperature, 17 to 19 degrees. But again, it is with, with sleep, it's finding that little magic that works for you. The idea of having a healthy sleep routine and good sleep hygiene is that you're triggering that go to sleep process from your brain. So you're doing little actions that will trigger the that your brain will recognize that because it's nine o'clock and you put your phone away and you're reading the book oh it's time to, to she's preparing or he's preparing to go to to go to sleep so to release the melatonin and stuff like that will be triggered and cortisol um slow down so have a think about some of those it really does impact um it really does impact on your quality of sleep um, and sometimes it's not so much the amount of sleep you have, it's the quality of sleep you have. And good sleep hygiene and good sleep routines are all about improving the quality of the sleep that you have. Um, but we can do another talk on sleep where we can go more in depth on that as well. Um, and then obviously the, the movement and exercise, you know, um, this is not always about like going to the gym three times three times a week and, and banging out a load of weights and stuff. It, it's not about that at all. Um, movement and exercise is just being active um, having an active lifestyle so being active a um, few tips for the day is kind of don't sleep don't sit at your desk for hours and on you know work for 25 minutes give yourself a five minute break work for 45 minutes give yourself a, a 10 minute break or 50 minutes give yourself a 10 minute break there are some great apps that have the Pomodoro um, techniques so have a look and, and look that up and check it out um, it's a great way of kind of breaking up that monotony of you sitting for two, three hours and trying to concentrate on your laptop, on your computer, or you're multitasking and trying to do two or three things at once. Don't give your brain, allow your brain to rest and recuperate. You'll be far more productive. Trust me. It might not sound by giving yourself more breaks during the day that you would be more productive, but just you will be more productive. Um, your brains, our brains can only take in so much information. And then it goes to brain overload. What you've got to remember is your brain is like a data processor. So don't overload it with information because it will burn out. Okay. Um, rest it. Recuperate it. Be kind to it. Um, tip for if you take a phone call, stand up and walk around when you're taking a phone call. Or if you, you've got a call to try and instead of doing a Zoom call, or you could do a Zoom call, but leave your camera off and just put it in your phone and go for a walk around the block. Um, Oh, it's the po Pomodoro technique, not the Pulmondora technique. Sorry. Is that my Northern accent? I do apologise. I shouldn't apologise for having a Northern accent, but I'm, I'm sorry that that wasn't clear for you. It's the Pomodoro technique. Um, so, yeah, have a think. Have a think about that. Just have a think about how you can make yourself more active in the day. And some of those activities that you do sitting down, can any of those be changed or altered so that you're standing up and being active? okay so have a think about those and that really is the three pillars of health but the reason they're so important is because they set that foundation if one of those pillars of health um if one of those pillars falls down then the other two fall with it if that makes sense it's like it's almost like it's like a stool that you go to sit on if one of the pillars is broken the stool will fall over us will you okay so i kind of use that analogy 
the other thing I mentioned in terms of talking from someone who does actually manage a mental health condition, for me, lifestyle and my life skills are so important. And one thing I, I talk about a lot is how healthy lifestyle and good life skills leads to, to good well-being overall. So have a look at those changes in your lifestyle. I mean, this is quite a drastic lifestyle change that I had to take, but you know, because because I manage bipolar, I no longer drink. I don't drink caffeine. I try and avoid as many stimulants as I as I can in order for me to keep keep me in my middle, as I call it, in terms of bipolar. For those who know or don't know what bipolar is, but bipolar is a mood disorder. Um, so you'll go from manic highs to depressive lows, um, and then you kind of have a middle area. And what a lot of treatments and medications try to do is try and keep people in that middle area. So I, I call it my middle. Um, so have a look at some of those lifestyle changes that you could be could be switching. But I remember to make those any lifestyle changes, make them small. So just make an, an incremental change. So stuff like from lifestyle from a, from an exercise and movement perspective, just to go for a for a walk once a week and stuff. Just just have a look what you can change from an alcohol perspective. We've, we've roughly got about one in four event professionals um, who struggle with alcohol in our industry. Um, and we also have one in three event professionals who are struggling with their mental health. Now, they were figures pre-lockdown. We will have some new figures on this in October when we release that report. Um, and they are slightly worrying, um, but we'll release those. So have a think about now about those lifestyle changes, life skills, is, is there any short courses, digital courses and stuff like that you can be doing in terms of time management and um, um, management skills, all those kind of things. So have a look at some of those things in terms of a self-improvement perspective that would impact well on your well-being. And then also as well, one of the, the big thing in terms of managing stress is having a look at what we call the three A's and that's alter, avoid or accept. And that's when you, from a stress management perspective, it's looking at situations. So the situation we're in now, for example, we cannot control it. We have no control over what's happening. We're being directed by the UK government in terms of what we can and cannot do. Um, so we have to learn to accept it. So in a situation like that, you can't control that. You have to, we have to learn to accept the situation we're in. And there'll be a journey in terms of before people can get to acceptance. Um, but have a look in terms of looking at certain situations from a stress management, look at that specific thing that is causing you pressure or stress and have a look at, can I alter it? Can I change it? Can I avoid it? And not avoid in a way of kind of running away from it, but avoid it in terms of, can I do something else instead? Um, and then from an acceptance perspective, um, sometimes the secret behind good stress management is not the, the, the action or the thing that's happened but also but our reaction to it and how we respond to it and acceptance and learning acceptance is all about that okay and remember that for for all of us as individuals we are responsible for our self-care okay nobody else is responsible for our self-care nobody else is responsible for us making sure we get a good night's sleep nobody else is responsible for ensuring that we eat healthily and that we're more active and we exercise more fundamentally self-care sits at the responsibility of the individual but when it comes to businesses which i'm going to move on to now i'm trying to think i've got time um businesses it's, it's all around culture absolutely 100 percent around culture that's what impacts the most on mental health and well-being. So as businesses, what you need to be doing now in order to better support your employees and you're going to see mental health, thanks, and you're going to see mental health um, on the increase, mental health illness and poor mental health on the increase, sorry. We need to, everything we do at Eventwell is, is revolved around the six core standards, Thriving at Work review. That was written in 2017 by Lord Stevenson and Paul Farmer. So what we need to be doing as employees, and Eventwell can support you with this, because this is how we work, but in terms of our manifesto, our champions program, our business memberships, everything we do revolves around the six core standards for having at work. You need to be looking at your working environment for your teams, whether they're working from home, an office, and you are going to see more people asking to work from home because it's been proved that it can be done. You need to check in with your team on an individual level. You need to speak to each one individually and find out where they, work, where they are. And then you need to routinely be checking in with them to make sure that they're okay. You need to be having open conversations on mental health 
you need to have a workplace well-being plan in place if you don't have one in place you need to do that now it's not enough to just have mental health first aiders you need to have a proactive workplace well-being policy and procedure in place to support your teams and you need to make it part of your culture you need to make it part of your culture so that people feel safe so people feel they can bring their whole selves to work people feel that they can be entirely open about how they're feeling or when they're struggling because that means that they're able to ask for help if you don't have that culture in place having a mental health first aider will impact nobody because none of your team will feel that they'll be able to go and speak to the mental health first aider without fear of reprisal or judgment so you need to have a proactive workplace well-being procedure and plan in place you need to look at your culture it's so important it's a reason it's one of event world's main values this is not about benefits it's not about cocktail making classes on the friday it's not about gym membership it's about making your team feel that they can and are able to come to work and that they are happy at work it makes them productive it makes them creative it it tackles absenteeism and presenteeism. Presenteeism is one of the biggest problems we're seeing at the moment due to digital meetings. It's very easy for someone to be, pretend that they are okay on a digital screen than it is in person. So have a think about presenteeism. It is gonna be an issue and we need to have a look at how we can tackle that. As business owners and managers as well, we need to be responsible and we are responsible for our own mental health. And we need to set an example. So our teams look up to us and they follow us and do what we do. Remember about that culture. It's not necessarily what your policies and procedures say your company does, but it's more co company culture is all about what you do. Company culture is this is the way things are done around here. So your teams will be looking to you for that direction. They'll be watching everything you do. So remember, lead by example. Talk about your mental health. Talk openly about your mental health. Everybody has mental health. There's no, should be no shame or stigma associated with it. And then from an industry perspective, and we have a real opportunity to change our tract that's been a long traditional tract in our industry that has caused so much damage and stigma and shame across our industry for people who are struggling. Okay, we need to look at empathy. We do. It's probably one of the most important values we have. Well, all three are just as important, but this is the, the, the big one that we need to tackle. We need to remove the old rhetoric that people need to toughen up when they're struggling or if they're, they're not thriving and struggling. We need, we need to stop that. Nobody needs to toughen up. The industry is pressured, yes. The industry is hard work. The industry can be long hours, but it doesn't need to be as stressful as it is for some people who are working in it. It's time to look at our old work hard, play hard mentality. You can still run successful events and successful businesses and have successful careers without a work hard, play hard mentality. Let's start looking at life balance in a much more empathetic way for, for the benefit of all of us. And it's also time to stop glorifying working long hours, back to back events. As a joined up industry, the biggest thing I can say at the moment to help anybody who finds themselves struggling and to make us more sustainable and resilient from a mental health perspective, it's time for us to start challenging the stigma. Um, that's been created by all of these presets that I've just, that I've just said. Let's make our industry a better place for future generations and new generations. We're in a difficult time at the moment. We need to come together. We're all going through. We're not going through any of these things alone. We're all going through this together. Let's make our industry that better place. It's a well event wellbeing month. It's time for action this week. Um, go to the event well website, eventwell.org. Check out our manifesto. That sets out those six core standards for having at work framework that we work towards. Um, so check that out, sign that, come and join us. Check out the Event World Champions program. Our aim is to have an Event World Champion in every event business by 2030, in line with the um, Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. There's 17 of those, mental health falls under number three, under clause 3.4. Um, as part of our commitment as a civil society, mental health and wellbeing organisation, we aim to have an event world champion in every business by 2030 and also check out friends event world professional and business professional membership is for individuals so freelancers sole corporate event organizers um entrepreneurs and um, that's for you business is for your teams and this is where we would support you with that proactive culture that i've been talking about and also you know mental health first day training um it is really important 
people have a, a right to mental health first aid in the same way that they do physical first aid. Um, so speak to us about all of those things. But remember guys, self-care, culture, empathy. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. That was, uh, that was really inspiring and really insightful. Now, Helen, don't go away anywhere because there are some audience questions that I will put to you in a few moments. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce our next champion solution sessions with Inception Events. Hi, Donna. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Great, thank you. Can you see our screen on as well at the moment? Hi everybody, hope you've had a good morning so far. I'm Donna Hodges, Managing Director from Inception Events and this is Lucy Patenti, Senior Event Manager. Inception Events has been operating for 10 years and we pride ourselves on being a bespoke agency who listens to our client needs, adapting to changes in the current climate. I'll hand you over now to Lucy, who'll talk through the images on the screen. Hi, everyone. The images that you can see on the screen are just a very, very small example of corporate events that we've organised in the UK and overseas for 10 to 3,000 people. This list that you can see um, is an example of events we organise, which includes small meetings, large conferences, awards dinners, parties and incentive travel. Due to the government changes with the pandemic, we can still organise meetings for up to 30 people in a secure COVID-19 hotel or venue. After the last, over the last few weeks, Donna has been visiting some hotels around the country to experience the measures that have been put in place. We're keeping up to date and in touch with suppliers so we can assist and guide you when planning your events. We offer free venue finding and event management services to suit your requirements. We've also diversified into virtual events, organising all types of corporate meetings. Working with our production partner, we're finding that these are a great way for companies to engage and motivate their staff, as well as keeping them updated with business matters. Most of you have probably already cancelled or moved Christmas parties to next year, but we of course don't want you to miss out on the office festivities. So we're therefore very excited to announce we're also moving forward with ideas for virtual Christmas parties. Expect lots of fun and surprises along the way. We can provide further information and tailor make individual packages to suit. Here are our contact details. We'd love to work with you. And if you require further information, please don't hesitate to give us a call or drop us an email. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Now, Helen, a few questions have, uh, have come in. Uh, they are all anonymous, but of course, that is absolutely fine. So, Helen, the first question I'm going to put to you reads, uh, we know how important it will be on the return to work to create a sense of belonging and connection. And now, more than ever, senior management will be heavily involved as perhaps fresh mental health issues emerge. What morale boosting exercise or support could we perhaps introduce to help mental health issues and reduce stress in the events industry? I probably covered a lot of that, but if there's any bullet point, bite sized points we can give to our, uh, our audience, I'm sure that would be welcome. Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing from a morale and confidence boosting perspective is exactly what I said in terms of we've just got to have those individual conversations at the moment. Um, you know, mental health is, is not just about team building exercises and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's not necessarily about the benefits. Good mental health and well-being is, is from an individual level. It looks different for different people. So it's very difficult, difficult for you to get a team based solution that's going to boost everyone's morale. Until you understand exactly what each individual person has experienced over the past six, seven months, what it's felt like for them, what they've gone through personally, until you've carried out that exercise, um, then, then nothing else really, I, I, I wouldn't see working. You might get people, you might get a little bit of morale boosting and stuff. What we, we need to realize is that we need to make people feel more valued. We need to make people feel valued. We need to make them feel important. And you do that by having those individual conversations and finding out what those individual people need, want, desire, what's gonna make a difference to them that's good leadership and that's good positive management. And that's from a team management perspective. I'm starting from an individual base 
and then from then you know ask 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 your guys what they want you know what would they find useful as as a team together as a morale boosting exercise don't try and wing this don't try and second guess we need to get better at speaking to each other and we need to get better about having open honest conversations with each other and that that starts from an individual basis so that's the best the best advice i can give you is that for team morale talk to each other individually thanks helen now i've got another question here understandably anonymous and it reads i found myself that i'm perhaps drinking a bit more than i should be as a busy event professional fueled by adrenaline normally i would never normally drink midweek but now i'm perhaps going for the wine most nights as no events are running i'm at home i don't even realize i'm doing it any tips to keep a lid on it and i think this comes back to the this idea that particularly with mental health it's it's not often just an explosion a switch and you change it's a gradual mm -hmm creep of changing habits yep um the biggest thing i could say is is well done for talking about it and two you, you've kind of you you kind of said though in that that kind of question that you don't even realize you're doing it but you do because you've asked it as a question so you're very aware that you're doing don't and this is this is a big thing we're, we're not here to preach to say you need to be doing this you need to be doing that you know Self-awareness is all about recognizing that you might be in a period, you've gone through a difficult period, we're all going through a difficult period. Self-awareness is about recognizing that you might be doing something and you recognize that as an unhealthy habit. Now, it, it could be that that is giving you a little bit of a crutch for a little while. So cut yourself a break, and don't give yourself a hard time. You've already got that self-awareness that that's, that's something that you're doing. Um, you know, if you're worried about it, speak to someone who's close to you um, and ask them to keep a check on it and say something and, and say something at some point in the future if it starts to get to worrying um, label. This is what self-awareness is about. And this is the biggest example of self-awareness is knowing that oh, you know, for the past, past two weeks, I, I haven't been going to bed at 10 o'clock and I haven't been using my bedtime routine. That's OK, too. It's okay to not be okay. And we need we lead to learn to be a little bit more comfortable, but recognize that self-awareness of being aware that we're actually doing it, but put yourself a bit of a break if you are doing it. You know, we need to be kind and a little bit gentler to ourselves as well. And, and don't beat yourself up if you find yourself that you're, there's, there's plenty of people who are drinking more in lockdown than they did out of lockdown. Um, you know, so it's, we're all in this together. I know, plenty of people who are in exactly the same situation um so don't don't judge yourself too much just be aware it's something you're doing and as soon as you can get yourself back on track just just concentrate on that but you know don't don't beat yourself up too much that's uh, that's really good advice that thank thank you helen i've got another question here from anonymous and it reads do you know of any online groups or or WhatsApp groups where like-minded event profs can share their worries and, and make new friends? Um, yeah, well, well, Eventwell actually has two online groups. Um, so there's Wellbeing and Events Peer Support on Facebook and there's a, there's a reciprocal group on LinkedIn as well. Um, as you can imagine, there's, there's some guys that have answered questions here anonymously. So we, we don't normally get an awful lot of people chatting, but what Eventwell does is we share tips and, and daily reminders and stuff in there to try and keep you motivated and boosted and then every couple of weeks we have a campfire chat which is a live chat where people just come you can just come and ask any question you want so whatever you might be concerned or worried about or just to come and have an after and a chat with some other events people particularly that's a particularly big support for anybody who might have been made redundant at the moment but wants to stay connected to other people in the industry you know nothing that event world does is having mental health talk kind of stuff it's not like that we're, we're about event well is about keeping people connected having open like-minded conversations bringing people together um, and providing support for people who are struggling so do we we have something that suits everybody but yeah please do check out those two groups well-being and events peer support on facebook and linkedin that that's great and one last question that popped up in the chat box which i didn't see uh, you know, I have to forget I'm not sure if this is the correct way of saying it but someone's asked for clarification on the is it the Pullman Dora technique or repeat Pullman Dora technique yeah the, the, the Pomodoro technique ah. so it's a P-O-M-O -O, Pomodora <laughs> Pomodoro it, it's spelt completely different to how you would expect it to be <laughs> I think of tomatoes and stuff when it went 
I think of it. So just, just think of tomatoes and you'll remember it. Pomodoro technique. There are apps that you can download and stuff that will help you. Basically what it is, it's, you can even just use a timer, set the time on your phone for 45 minutes with an alarm um, and then give yourself a break and then set your timer again. It's a great way as well of breaking down tasks into smaller chunks so you can manage them a bit better. So it's, it's, it's a really, really good um, time management tool that's been used. That's great. And lastly, Helen, I'm just going to ask you to just repeat the website where people can learn more about Eventwell. Yeah, um, eventwell.org. Um, you'll find all of the information on us there. And you'll find, Marina also asked about the six core standards. Um, you'll find those under the Eventwell Manifesto. It details the six core standards and our Eventwell Champions Programme, but it's eventwell.org. Great. Helen, thank you so much. That was a really inspiring session. I hope our audience found it useful too. Thank you, everyone else. We're now going to break for lunch and the event will continue at 1.35 with our next panel discussion, which is titled Safeguarding Events, Health and Safety. Thank you very much. And thank you, Helen.